Hey everybody, welcome to Alum House Sound. My name is Dave, and today we're gonna to dive into a scene from one of you all. So today we're gonna to check out a scene that comes from a person named Omar88. They're in the comments section a bunch, they've been asking a lot of questions, and they've done a great job utilizing these videos to get their mix set up and in a great place. Now he reached out recently and said, hey, our mix sounds good, we really like it, but we think we're missing something. Can you just take a look at the scene, let us know what we could do a little different to really add something to the mix, or just tell me it's great and let's move on. So I had him send me in the copy of his scene as well as a link to his live stream. So let's jump in and take a listen to his live stream for just a minute or two, do some quick evaluation, and then we'll dive into the uh, the scene and see what the mix looks like from all the nitty gritty and the details. So here we go. All right, so we're here, we're checking out Renovation Church. Renovation Church, there's apparently a number of them on YouTube, and, uh, and so this is the specific one from Omar. And so I just wanted to take a listen to this. We're going to start out uh, just a couple seconds of this prayer. We'll hear this, uh, this condenser mic, the gooseneck mic that's on the podium. We'll see what that sounds like. Sing, and as we worship, may it be to your praise, honor, and glory from a people called out of darkness into your marvelous light, that we may declare the praises of the one that called us. All praise be to you and you. Yeah, so that sounds good. That's a pretty typical, uh, just straight up microphone. It's not going to have a whole lot of body to it. Um, you've got a good proximity picking up, and I like the pads that they've got playing in the background. So let's take a listen to the band, which comes up next, and we'll see what we get there. He is worthy of all praise, rejoice, sing the mercies of your King, and with trembling rejoice. We are children of the prophet, the beloved of Yeah, what I like so far is that they've got a good blend of instruments. They, you can hear the drums, you can hear the bass, the two guitars, even the vocals. It's a really good mix. Longs to know the affections of a father who will never let them go. So yeah, the mix sounds good. I really like it. Um, I think I could use a little bit of top end, maybe presence on the vocals just to get them to stick out, have a little more sparkle onto the vocals, if you will. So not knowing what the EQ looks like on them or if they're in a group, I'm not sure, but we can take a look at that. The other thing that I'm missing is some effects. Everything is pretty straight down the middle, pretty dry. I mean, the, the keys, obviously there are some stereo things happening, uh, but for the most part, there's no effects to kind of put this mix into a room. So we'll take a look at that too. Let's just give another listen for just a second and see uh, see how everything else feels. I want to listen to kick drum and snare drum compared to the bass guitar. That's the next thing I'm going to listen to. Yeah, so the bass guitar I could also use a little more top end on. Uh, he is playing with a pick, so I'm kind of surprised it's not a little bitier. But I also don't know if he's going through any sort of uh, effects pedal or anything like that. So we'll check out the EQ on the bass as well. Keys on the the right side of the keys or the the, the higher end part of the, the keys, the more attacky part. That seems to stick out a little more in the mix than maybe I would tend to do it, but at the same time, it is adding some melodic content during the long notes of the vocals, and it's giving us some forward direction, so not mad at that at all. All right, uh, let's take a look at their scene. We'll pull that up and see what we get. 
All right, so I'm gonna hide myself here so that we can see the full screen. And let's go ahead. If you're not used to using X32 Edit, I have the scene saved on the machine. This is just a blank scene. So what I'm gonna do is load this up. So I'll go to load scene. I will find in my list of locations where I've saved it because I don't remember. All right, here we go. So this is our scene loaded up. And let's just take a look through this. I'm gonna shrink this down to just be 16 channels at a time in the DCAs. So we've got vocals here, we've got handheld and preacher, then we've got some instruments, so acoustic, bass guitar, electric guitar, left and right, so they got stereo electric, stereo keys, and then listed as some spares. No DCAs, so that's fine. Then we have drums, pretty typical setup, uh, two, top, two rack toms, a floor tom, hats. Uh, left and right overheads are down. We'll take a look at that. I did want a little bit more cymbal, a little bit more flourish from the cymbal, but uh, we'll take a look at that. And then we got some more blank channels here. Let's keep looking through. Auxes, one and two not being used, computer left and right, iPod, and then we do have some effects here, the returns, muted for effects one, a little bit for effects two and three uh, returns, but I also don't see those buses up at all, which tells me that they're not really using those effects, unless they have things routed really weird. Let's look at our buses and matrices. So we've got a stereo vocal bus, we have a speaking bus, crowd mics, instruments left and right, drums left and right, and then some uh, other random buses. Maybe bus nine is a, a monitor of sorts or a, who knows. Effects buses again are not up. And then we have matrix. So matrix one and two go into video left and right. I've got to assume that that's their live stream feed, but then they have zoom left and right. Got to assume that's a zoom feed. And then drums, a matrix for that, which is all the way down, not sure what they're doing there. So let's dive in even further and see what we can find. So the biggest thing I think was that I was missing uh, effects. So it appears that they, they have their live stream through a matrix. So if I come to vocals and I go up to, let's say, sends. In theory, they would be sending vocal left and right into their video or their Zoom matrix, but I don't see that. Let's look at speaking. Speaking is up into both of those. We have instrument left and right those are not going into any of the matrices. Drums are only going to the drum matrix, but that's all the way down. And then we have this matrix, uh, mix bus nine. Not sure what that's doing, 10, 11, 12. None of those. We've got effects buses that are not doing anything. So I'm a little confused. So I'm gonna go up to routing and see what we have here. Pull this up on the other screen. Now, real quick, put myself back up here. So real quick, uh, we are using X32 Edit. This is an easy way to review a scene, do a screen capture, and you guys can see everything the same that I'm seeing it. Uh, I've had some feedback of other X32 Edit videos where people say, hey man, why are you using X32 Edit? A lot of people don't have a computer connected to their console. Do something on the console. 98% of my videos are on the console and there's a couple, 2%, that are on X32 Edit. So just get a feel for what's going on. Maybe you can learn the software. Uh, but anyway, that's a little PSA for you. If you don't like this video because on X32 Edit, go check out plenty of the other videos that are on the console. But this is what we're doing with this video. Let's dive back in. All right, so let's look at routing. Inputs are coming from AES 50, so they've got a stage box, but then they have some local inputs, 25 to 32. 
We can check out that stuff in a minute. Going back out, they have their outputs uh, one through eight, just the standard outputs routed. Card, they have uh, locals one to 16 going out, which is interesting because they don't actually have anything coming in those inputs. And then they have AES 51 to 16 going out as well. But that means that they're only catching the first 16 channels, possibly. Let's keep going. XLR. All right, we've got regular outputs on the back of the board using all of our XLR outputs. Here's our regular outputs now. We have left and right going out uh, one and two. Then we have three and four off. Five, six, seven, and eight are being sourced by the matrix. Five, six, seven, and eight are going out. Five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, that's our video and our Zoom. Everything else is turned off. So very minimal outputs here. Let's check auxiliary outs. Auxiliary outs are not being used either. That's fine. Take a quick peek at user ins and outs. I didn't see anything set up. So user ins, user outs, nothing there is set up. Let's peek at Ultranet. It does look like they've got some P16s because they have some direct channels coming in, being sent out. Okay, this makes a little more sense. Their drums matrix that they're using is being sent out to the P16s. So that's good. And they've got just a mix of their other band instruments. They've even got two spares in there. Good for them. Okay, let's get out of the routing and try and figure out how they're getting a signal to their video send. So the next thing that we can send into a matrix is any bus or the only thing on this console is a bus. With that being said, we've looked through all of these buses and we see that none of them, except for the speaking, are going to the video left and right. There is another bus, in fact two, but we'll only talk about one, and that is our main left and right. So if I click on LR right here, you'll see that that is selected now in the left. And we can see that the main mix is, in fact, feeding pre-fader, feeding the matrix one, two, as well as three and four. So what that means is they've taken a look at the matrix video that I did a while back, which was... Uh, which was talking about building your house mix and then sending that this direction here, starting with your main mix, sending that into your live stream, and then supporting it with other buses as needed. So when I look at this, the only other thing that they're adding into their mix is the speaking. That's pretty impressive. Now, if I'm looking for effects, I've got to think about if, I, if I've got enough effects, I'm going to turn myself on here. So I want to take a second and think about this. If I have my house mix going into my live stream, that's fine if my house mix is polished. But right now what I'm hearing is they probably have a lot of natural reverb in the room. And they've got a little bit added in when we look at these returns here. If I click on this and go to channel, so I've selected their returns and their return for effects one is going into mains, effects two going into mains, three set to mains, and four set to mains. So they do have the ability and, and have some effects set to be turned on but as we saw, these buses are not up, so it's unlikely that they're actually feeding any effects into their house. So that means that their house mix has all of the reverb that they need within the room, and we're taking a copy of that, sending it out to our viewers through the internet. So we need to add a room. What can we do here? Let's take a look at their effects and see what we can find out. So if I click on effects one here, I see a plate verb and that has, well, that's interesting. Oof. All right. So bus one and two, which is vocal left and right. 
that bus is sending into the plate verb. So that makes me wonder what mix is going into this bus that is, well, it's turned off anyway. Let's look at effects two, which we actually have that turned on a little bit. That's set to bus five and six, which is instruments. Not a bad choice to have a, not a bad choice to have a hall verb on your instruments and it's trying to do it, but I think we want to take a different approach here. Uh, we see effects seven and eight vintage room that's set up for their drums. And so what this is treating it like almost as a, man, it's, I would say it's like an insert effect, but it's not really an insert effect. So I think a better option here would be to use these effects buses that we have one, two, three, and four. If this was me, I would go back and I would set this to be bus 13 and bus 13, bus 14 and 14. We can keep going 15 and 15 and then bus 16, bus 16. Now, what this is going to do is utilize the stock effects buses here. And if we look on the, let's grab some instruments. And if we look on the left, we can click on effects one. This is like selecting the bus and hitting sends on fader. So with this, if we wanted to have all of our, um, our vocals go into, into effects one, we could turn this up. So we could just say zero, zero, and do this. And, and this is by default sending the same amount of signal for all of our vocals into this effects one, which is a plate verb. We could then turn this on and that would give us a reverb sound. Now I don't have any tracks this, con this scene is not hooked up to a console, so we're not going to be able to see or hear any of this stuff. Uh, the last thing we want to do is actually turn these on going into that bus. So with that bus, we're sending signals into effects one bus. But now if we look over here at the far right, we're going to see the fader for effects one bus is down all the way. So while we're sending inputs into effects one, we're not sending this bus anywhere, it's turned down. So we would need to turn this up. Let's just go to Unity or close to it. Now we're gonna send this mix of four vocals into this plate verb. That plate verb then is going to be returned on the effects returns, which are over here. And let's get back on to our main left and right on the right hand side so that we're not uh, looking at the effects bus, but the main left and right. So this gives us the ability now to take this effects rack and we can turn this up. Now this is, remember, they only need this much going into their house mix. So then what we would do is try and find a way to, to uh, augment this into our live stream. Now, we got to think about that. These are now inputs that we can send into a bus. And if you remember on the right hand side, buses 9, 10, 11, and 12 are available. So maybe we come in and we take buses, let's just take 11 and 12. I'll select bus 11. I can come up to channel and I'll stereo link. I'll hit OK. And then I can call these stream effects. And if I don't fat finger, that'd be even cooler. Stream effects, this is left. And we'll just make it a fun color there. This one here, stream effects right. Now we need to turn this up to zero. This bus, we would like to set this bus uh, potentially as pre-fader 
you've got some options there, but if they're not moving their effects too much in their, during their service, then they could be static set. So if we bring this to zero, we'd go to our inputs and what I want to do is find our effects returns. We can select effects one. We can then come up to sends and here, here's our stream effects bus. I'm going to click on the global button and I want to set these to be pre fader and I'll hit OK. What that does is that changes all of my, uh, my entire effects, stream effects buses, these stereo ones, so that all of my inputs now are pre fader going into that bus. Now what I have the ability to do is select that bus here on the right and I can come here and turn up the effects returns to the amount that I need to make the stream have plate verb for my vocals. Now we can repeat this. We can come into the effects for uh, the hall verb. That hall verb is here on effects two. That one was being treated for just the instruments. So I can bring up my instruments. Now we may not need the same amount of input for each, uh, each instrument. The keys already have verb on them. So we may not need any keys on there. Electric guitar probably is gonna have a pedal on it that we don't need any more verb. Bass guitar, only need it sparingly. Acoustic guitar, let's add some reverb to that thing. Now I think that this, uh, if we take this mix and we can say, uh, see how these are turned off. We could also turn off the handheld and the preaching just to make sure that they don't go into this verb. We could do the same for drums, all these drum mics and maybe even the crowd mics because they're already gonna have verb if they have them on at all. Anyway, this is gonna give us the ability now to have this mini mix going into effects two, which is the hall verb. We'd come back over here to main left and right, and we'll make sure that our effects are uh, returns. They're pulled up some and that's fine, but because we're going pre-fader, we can find our stream effects. Now we're gonna add, we're building a mix of just effects returns. This is where it gets a little maybe complicated in the brain, but we're gonna take stream effects. We've got some vocal reverb. Maybe we only need this much of our band reverb going into this effects bus. Now, why are we doing this into an effects bus in the first place? We can't send these returns into a matrix. We can send these returns into a bus and then the bus goes into the matrix. So let's just say this is all that they need. Uh, they don't need drum verb as an example. I think they need drum verb, but let's say that they don't. We've got all we need. Now what we're gonna do is go back to main left and right on the right hand side. Then we're going to select our buses on the left. We'll find our stream effects bus where we've built a mix of reverbs. Click on it, come up here to sends at the top. And now our video stream we can add this in to our video stream according to how much we need. This is going to be the mix of effects. So if this were me, I would actually start with this maybe around minus 10 as a good starting place, just so we've got some level going in. Then I would work my way backwards. I would send my inputs into each effects rack. Then I would start mixing the buses by coming in here to stream and I would go to my effects. And now I would bring this one up according to how much I need in my stream. And I'd listen to my stream. How much do I need? Great, that's enough vocal reverb. How much band reverb? Okay, we can use less of that. How much of the drum reverb? Drum reverb, maybe we need a little bit more to, because that drum's in a shell full, uh, fully enclosed, maybe we need to add some life to the drums to get them to sing out some more. So this is the thing that I think we can utilize 
in this setup. Now I will point you to one other thing that I noticed as I was looking through this. Let's go back to main left and right. We'll go back to our inputs and we're gonna talk about bus configuration. If I click on, uh, let's see here, mixer, this view up here looks a little weird. I'm gonna zoom in and if we look at this, we can see that we just have on off buttons for our buses. Notice the red ones are all red and they're just turned on. Then we've got some blue ones that are turned on. We don't have the normal look and feel like we do when we have volume. And that's because these are set up different. These are set up as groups, which are different than buses. So let's talk about this. I'm gonna zoom back out. And let's go click on an input. We'll click on sends. And let's take a look at this. See right here, I'll zoom back in. These are set to subgroups. Subgroup, subgroup, subgroup. This is kind of a, it's a different concept. It's fine in the way you, you, you use it if you can use it well. It's effectively a post fader mix bus but the send level is all at Unity. So instead of using, coming over here, clicking on vocal and turning these faders up or down to uh, adjust the amount of send going into this bus, you don't do that. These faders don't do anything. It's just an on or off, muted or unmuted, going into the subgroup because the subgroup itself has everything pretty much at this unity concept if you're thinking in a post fader mix bus setup. So they've got all of their buses set as groups just to be able to group them. And I'm assuming uh, if I click on vocal left and right, maybe they've got some EQ, they don't have any EQ, there's no compression. Well, I was thinking that they were going to be using these to uh, further refine the sound. And so because they have the vocals in a group, here's a thought. You know, I talked about looking for a little bit of the sparkle on the top end of the vocals. Maybe they come in here, turn the EQ on, and just add a little shelf up here in the 10K range, just to add a little bit of, again, that air into the top of their vocals. It might open them up some. You could also, if you needed to, just do a basic uh, kind of low cut on the uh, on the entire group if you needed to cut out any mud that was in there. So groups, just like buses, are super helpful. Again, you just don't have the ability to mix how much goes into each, uh, each individual uh, bus. Sorry, you don't have the ability to mix or adjust the input level going into the bus to then further refine that mix. You would be just looking at the main left and right this mix here uh, determines how much goes into the bus and then into the mains. Let's click on this real fast and just see if I look at the channel. We do see properly that this channel is uh, not going into the main left and right because it's going into the bus and the bus is going to the main left and right for it. So they're using it, the bus as groups, uh, but they're sending all of their inputs through buses. Then they could add those in to their matrix live stream mix if they needed to and uh, and then further refine that. So, so again, when I look at the EQ and compression that's on uh, each channel, I don't see a whole lot being done, which good for them if they're getting the sound that they're getting without needing a whole lot of work or refinement, then that's great. Now, again, you they could come in here. Uh, they don't even. They don't have EQ turned on. Just low cut. So starting with the real basics. But they could use some compression if they wanted to get the vocal to sit on top of the mix a little bit more. They could come in and use this EQ again per input if they wanted to. They could turn this on, add a little air to the top end of each mic if that's helpful. Or they can leave that off, and again do that over here at the bus level. 
So you've got different options of what they can do. So that's what I see when I'm looking at the scene. Let's jump off the computer and we'll kind of wrap this video up. All right, well, that was super fun to dive into Omar's scene and take a look at Renovation Church. Uh, if you want to check out their YouTube channel, I'll have a link down in the description. You can kind of punch through some of their other videos and, and see what they sound like at a larger spectrum of uh, the material that they're putting out. Also, maybe check in with future uh, versions and uh, future streams and see if they take any, if they make any changes and what it sounds like. But I do appreciate, Omar, you sending in your stream and your copy of your scene that we could take a look together as a group. Hopefully we've learned something and hopefully you have found this video helpful. If you have, as always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We've got other videos coming out in the future as well. Some different techniques for the X32 that I think you'll find beneficial. Well, if you need help, Feel free to check out my website where you can find the contact card and you can uh, reach out to me outside of YouTube. But if you've got any burning questions right now, just put those down in the comment section below. I'm always answering questions in the comment section. But thanks again for checking out this video. We will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.